Yes, so uh, that was already my introduction. I'm Jelle Pellerheims. I work at NS as a cloud engineer um, at the platform engineering team, the LBS platform engineering team. So there is indeed a lot more IT behind NS than you might uh, know. So of course, most of you know the NS app, the NS website. Most of you have also used the access gate that gives you access to the train stations. Uh, most of you have used the ticket vending machines, and most of you have probably seen the screens on the train platforms that tell you when the train arrives. And there's a lot more systems that you don't know about behind the screens that uh, try to keep the trains running on time, mostly. Um, so a lot of those systems, they run on the cloud. And, um, not just one cloud, but multiple. At uh, NS, we use both Azure, AWS, and the self-managed data center. Um, so a lot of these IT systems, uh, we have a lot of teams at NS that want to move to AWS or uh, are already using AWS. And it is uh, my team's responsibility to make sure that goes uh, streamlined. So we want the experience for each uh, team that's using AWS to be streamlined, starting from the initial migration up to the point of actual usage. Um, we feel that teams shouldn't have to worry about things that are not um, essential to their product, not essential to the thing that they are building. We don't want them to have to think about networking, about um, identity and access management, about policy enforcement, about things like account provisioning. We don't want them to think about it. We want us to be able to take care of that so that they can just do their work. And you could call this platform engineering. Uh, basically, what my team does is we, uh, we build a landing zone where other teams can then land their product on, and we take care of all the rest. So in this talk, I will be focusing specifically on account provisioning. And what do I mean with account provisioning? I mean specifically the act of creating an account and then deploying those res uh, the resources in the account like networking, identity and access management, uh, policy enforcement, all those things that are not essential uh, for uh, product teams. So, Yeah, why exactly do we even need account provisioning? Um, as you might know, NS is quite a big company. Uh, you might say if you're using AWS, just use one AWS account and put all your projects in there. But of course, it only works if you're a startup, where there's maybe one or two people actually using AWS, and you can just uh, share a password or something. At NS, we have uh, quite a lot of teams, uh, which each need at least one AWS account. So that means we need to have a process for creating accounts, which is uh, the account provisioning. So, all right, we already know that we need multiple accounts. How will we organize those accounts? Uh, as I said previously, um, you could just have one account, and then you put uh, all of your projects into that one AWS account. Another approach uh, would be that uh, you have one AWS account, and then inside of that AWS account, you place multiple IAM users. And each IAM user has its own uh, login info, so you can kind of limit access to projects. So you can uh, create an IAM policy that gives a certain IAM user only access to a certain project. So that's already a good start, I would say. Another approach that you could take is to just have um, one IAM user per developer. Like if you're just one team with a lot of developers using AWS, you could give each developer their own uh, login info, their own IAM user, and then you can have fine-grained fine control uh, through the, to the projects uh, using IAM policies. This is already a, a lot uh, better approach, I think. Um, now, at NS, we have uh, a lot of teams which all have their own, um, you know, things that they need. So the thing that we do at NS mostly is we give each team three accounts, one for each environment, uh, development, staging, and production. And then we give developers access to those three accounts uh, through LBS single sign-on, which is now uh, IAM Identity Center. And that has worked out pretty well for us um, so far. But of course, the fact that uh, each team will have at least three accounts, like you probably need three accounts per project, per team, that means there's lots of accounts, so um, how do we manage that? 
We need to be able to create those accounts. We need to be able to uh, deploy resources like networking to those accounts. How will we do it precisely? Um, yes. So before I get into details, I want to talk about the account lifecycle, the AWS account lifecycle at NS. So um, the account lifecycle starts with a customer team. A customer team, uh, you know, is getting started on AWS. They want an account, so they send a request to uh, our team. Our team receives this request on the API, and at that point, um, there is a system called account vending machine, um, also the AVM, that creates the account. A quick side note, at NS, uh, we love abbreviations. NS itself is an uh, abbreviation. So basically, all the systems that we build, lots of software projects and all those things, they all have abbreviations, also the teams. So if there are a lot of abbreviations in this presentation, um, I try to make all of them as clear as possible, but sometimes it's just, uh, yeah, impossible. Anyway, so you have the account vetting machine, it creates the account, and at that point, uh, yeah, it also deploys resources like net networking and that kind of stuff to the account. At that point, you have a provisioned account. And of course, you might have to roll out updates to these accounts. Uh, you might have to change the network. You might have to change uh, some automation stuff. And we do that using CloudFormation stack sets. If you haven't heard of those, uh, those allow you to update multiple accounts at once in an automated fashion, so you don't have to do each account at once. Um, we also do uh, policy enforcement, like we try to limit what each account specifically can do within AWS, and for that we use AWS Control Tower. So, all right, then we have a provisioned account, and once this account is no longer needed, once this account, uh, you know, just not needed anymore, then we have another system called the account shredding machine, which removes the account. So, that is the whole, uh, yeah account lifecycle, AWS account lifecycle at NS. So to summarize, we have the account creation, the provisioning, we have the account uh, updating, and we have the removal of accounts. And this is done by two systems, the account vending machine and the account shredding machine. We have built those systems with uh, AWS step functions, and that's basically just a state machine. And inside that state machine, uh, we try to mostly use direct uh, AWS API calls. And if we cannot do something uh, like deploy resource or whatever with an API call, we try to use uh, lambdas because it makes it very easy to uh, you know, implement custom uh, logic and whatever. So these systems are deployed using uh, AWS CDK. It makes it very easy for us to uh, maintain the system. Uh, there's very little maintenance. It's all uh, quite easy. There is one thing that we don't really like about this specific implementation. Um, that is the fact that if you want to change something about one of these two systems, you want to, if you want to add functionality, you have the problem that um, the what I call the, the right uh, deploy test loop, like you create some functionality, you deploy it, and then you test it. This loop takes quite a lot of time because just deploying the resources to AWS already takes uh, 10 to 15 minutes because of the, the type of resources that we deploy. And we can't really change that. It, it's just how it is. So this, this whole, you know, like uh, write, deploy, test loop takes 30 minutes, and th that's quite annoying uh, if you have to do that every time that the feature changes, or if maybe once you test it, it doesn't work, it, it's annoying. So that's still room for improvement there. Uh, maybe topic of the next talk, but uh, <laughs> I'll leave that for the future. So, yeah. So far we have covered the uh, account vending machine, the account shredding machine, uh, why we have those and how they are built. How exactly do we make sure that this system works? Um, you could say, uh, okay, well, one option would be to just create accounts, you know, just create an account and see what happens. Does it work? Does it not work? Uh, and of course, that, that's the most logical idea, that's the best idea, but there is an issue because once you do that on like a schedule every night, after a while, you have a lot of accounts and each of those accounts um, will have automatically some resources deployed some resources deployed into them. And that means that each of those accounts costs money. And uh, of course, from the context of the company, that, that's not a lot of fun, even if it's you know just a few thousand euros 
you might say uh, not that important, but it's, if, if it's not needed, you don't want it. So then you might say, okay, why don't you just delete those accounts? It seems very obvious. Well, I thought so too, until I ran into the AWS uh, account removal quota. And this quota basically means that you can only remove 10% of your accounts within a 30-day rolling window. And I had never heard of this quota before. Uh, I don't know, I, I assume most of you haven't either, because it seems to be a very um, rare thing to hit this. So we ran into this issue when we just tried to delete the accounts that we created to test the system. And I, uh, you know, I thought of one funny solution. So, okay, if AWS says you can only remove 10% of your accounts within a 30-day rolling window, why don't we just create like 2,000 accounts? Then our limit is 200 accounts per month, and that would kind of fix our problem if you only create one account per day. But, of course, you still have the issue that each of those 2,000 accounts would cost money. And um, it is very obvious that AWS doesn't want you to remove that many accounts uh, for some reason, so we decided against it. Instead, we went with a, a lot more elegant approach, I think. Um, instead of uh, constantly creating and then removing an account, we decided to just reuse the same account over and over. So. We have the two systems, the account vending machine and the account shredding machine. The account shredding machine, it uh, completely removes, it, first it empties the account and then it removes the account. So what we did is we changed the account shredding machine so that it can stop right before it uh, performs the uh, AWS close account API call. So then if we run the account shredding machine with the correct flag, it will stop before it leads the account and then we just have an empty account. We also changed the account vending machine itself so that it could get started with an empty account. Usually it gets uh, started, it just creates a completely new account, but now we added a flag so that it could uh, get started, deploy the resources into an existing empty account. So with those two changes to our systems, we now had a possibility to perform a dry run of our system. And we now run this, uh, this dry run every 24 hours so that uh, we always know, we're always sure that our system works. Um, at NS, we have the objective that we want to uh, know, you know, if a customer team sends us a request to create an account, we want to be able to service that request within the same business day. And if something goes wrong with the AVM, if you have to fix it, that might take anywhere up to a day, a week, uh, you don't know how long it takes. And uh, that's not optimal. So. With this system, we, uh, you know, we receive an email if the uh, dry run goes wrong. We run this thing in the, in the middle of the night, so then we receive an email. And then we can fix it before a customer team sends a request and uh, we are able to reach our objective. And uh, that was really fun to uh, implement this and also be able to uh, service other teams in the time that we wanted it to. So, yeah, that is what I wanted to tell you here uh, today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to revisit the contents of this talk, I have written them down. You can uh, reach them at this URL, or you can also scan the uh, QR code. And uh, thank you for listening. <laughs>